Biden commemorates 100th anniversary of the Tulsa race massacre. Now, we're going to get into this a little bit. Um, understand this, folks. They're trying to paint this in the media that first time a president ever came down to Tulsa, Oklahoma to visit the people of Greenwood. Look, hate him or not, Donald Trump tried to do that. He tried to do that with Juneteenth. You know, he had a big rally, but assume, uh, um, of course, we're going to make paint the rally out to be a bigot rally, a rally of bigots when it's a lot of black people that probably would have went to that rally. Asian people would have went to that rally. Latinos would have went to that rally. Predominantly, most of Trump rally is not all white and it's not all white bigots. It's just some white people that believe in Trump over whatever the Democrats do. Not every Republican racist. Just like it, not every white Democrat like black people. Got to stop this stuff, folks. He was going to do a meeting there, but because we got so outraged and the media played on us black people uh, to get outraged for that fact, he decided not to go. Shame on him. He's going to have a rally on um, the, the day before Juneteenth. And he's going to have it in Tulsa, not too far from Black Wall Street, where a bunch of racists went out and killed black people. Ain't got nothing to do with him, number one. But yeah, who knows what he was trying to do? According to the White House staff, he went down there. He was trying to acknowledge it, too. Why? Because he was trying to get that vote. Not that he really cared about what happened in Tulsa, Oklahoma and Black Wall Street, but he came up there because he was trying to fish for the black vote. Man, you'd be surprised what de desperate time calls for desperate measure. And Trump wanted that re-election so he could match up with Obama, so to speak. So he would have been willing to go down. He was willing to go to Tulsa, Oklahoma. He was willing to go down and uh, um, talk about um, um, Black Wall Street. Much as he wanted the black support, he probably would have lied and apologized. Talking about, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Negro, you weren't sorry. But he probably would have did it. So in the media, today, Joe Biden goes to talks to Oklahoma and he commemorates and he goes to visit. Let's take a look at all that stuff. Let me be quiet. <laughs> take a look at all this stuff. All right. Here's proof. Trump and Tulsa, city faces up the violent pass ahead of rally. So they want to placate they want to placate Black Wall Street right before Trump rally. They didn't do it during the Obama administration. They wasn't doing it the first three years of the Trump um, administration. They didn't do it during the Clinton administration. But as soon as Trump tried to lobby for black votes, which he needed to try to lobby for, <laughs> he's supposed to do that. Not that he's going to get it. And about buying that mess coming out of his mouth, your dog gonna fool. But look, who knows? Now I don't trust Trump no more than I trust Biden. Both of them are pathological, lying, bigot, racist with rape allegations. One just a little um, calmer and you know smiles and have a little grandpa tendency, and one one just butt ugly and out loud with us. But in efforts, I personally believe to try to get the black vote. Trump was going down there. So here's proof. Jane O'Brien, BBC News, Tulsa. Trump in Tulsa City face up the violent past. President Trump is holding his first political rally since the start of pandemic in Tulsa, Oklahoma. This weekend, his choice of location, the date have raised tension in the city, struggling to come to terms with this history of violence. So why him coming <laughs> to Oklahoma raise tension and Biden going down there don't raise tension well he's a bigot Trump is a bigot right y'all better wake up and realize he ain't the only bigot <laughs> come on people and then they go through the history of Greenwood and put that on the title of Trump's coming to America I mean, not America, but Green, Greenwood. 
Here's another one. Trump will stay on the top of land of tragedies. All right, to me, you could just put Biden there. The same thing. Biden stood on top of a land of tragedies. What's the difference? Well, one's a Democrat, one's a Republican. What the that got to do with anything? One's a bigot and one's uh, not a bigot. He had got black friends. All right, bigots got black friends. Big, uh, real, let me tell you something. Real deal bigot, you would never know he's a racist because he loved the cloud himself around black people. I called them the big daddies. You know, big daddy on Django Unchained. Got all them beautiful black women. Oh, big daddy, big daddy, big daddy. You mean like white people, big daddy? Oh, no, not like white people. Oh, Django ain't got that. He ain't got that kind of power. You know, Django's a free man. You mean he can roam anywhere like white people? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Tell me what, you don't know these. <laughs> you sit there and think these out loud, ugly, in your face bigots. Or one thing, it's those down low people who bring you in and nice to you and things like that. And they're as big as they come. They're the one that you need to worry about. Yep. So in this, they 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 want to shame Trump because the the narrative Trump is the only bigot in the world to be president or to run for office, and he's going down to a place where bigot murdered a bunch of people, which is kind of true. But he ain't the only bigot in the world that ran for office. Black Week, Wall Street Trump plans for rally in Tulsa calls attention to 1921 race massacre so they was drawing they were putting up the moment trump started talking about going on uh, wall um, going to tulsa then the media want to all of a sudden start talking about black wall street now folks understand there were black wall streets all over the country tulsa was not the only other uh, uh, only one and there's a lot of black people down there that said tulsa was the most prosperous land now, tulsa um um uh, you know greenwood was prosperous based on the oil profits down in that area but they're not there wasn't the only rich black areas in the country in the race riots i don't like to call it race riot the black holocaust the black massacre because that's what it was that didn't just happen in greenwood Now, here we go. Biden to travel to Oklahoma to commemorate 100th anniversary of Tulsa Race Massacre. Now, why are you not talking about, oh, how bad it was then and how Joe Biden stands on a, uh, what they say over here? Uh, stands on a uh, mountain of horror or whatever. Why didn't, where's the Biden uh, stuff up here? It's not up here. Well, he did visit Greenwood. Let's take a look at this. So they honored to have the president there, which is it's an honor to have a president there. There are several photographs I'd like to highlight. For the past 30 years, we have worked to acknowledge the history of the 1921 Tulsa Race Massacre and Black Wall Street. The work in this pictorial exhibit is based largely on the writings of former state representative Don Ross. And this land where we stand now is considered sacred ground. This was- Now, understand. Now, they're supposed to be taking him through pictures, images of what happened. She's gonna take him through pictures and images of how booming the town was. And it was booming. It was so booming that when whites needed to get something, those who were not, quote unquote, uh, so racist that they can't get nothing from a Negro, they would come down to Greenwood and um, get bank loans and things like that. We're going to talk about this topic right here soon. Because that ain't happening. The things that he's talking about do, doing will not increase the black white wealth gap. The only way to decrease the black white wealth gap is reparations and nothing less. Let me keep going. It was once home to Black Wall Street. In this image, which is dated 1917, you can see black owned businesses lining the streets of Greenwood. There were dentists. Now tell me something. 
We got a man who's the president of the United States. Always quote history. Folks, my nieces and nephews know about this stuff. My God kids know about the black massacres that happen all over the United States. Let me start before we get there. Here's a list of massacres, black massacres that happened in the United States. And I try, I had a whole list of them on a playlist where you can go look at it. You go look at my playlist and look at why we need reparations. Now, a lot of them got taken down like the devil's punch bowl. But these massacres happen all over the countries. Wilmington Massacre. White supremacists led by Alfred Waddle led a mob of white vigilantes to Wilmington, North Carolina, burning down a daily record, murdering black citizens and driving thousands of others out of Wilmington, North Carolina. Blacks ran Wilmington, North Carolina. They're so jealous. Black politicians, they had black leadership. Black mayor, you name it. Black win, women to massacre. Look it up. There's a documentary on it. You know, there have been massacres going on all over this country. There was a massacre, multiple massacres in Florida that they don't want to talk about. They'll talk about the many massacres that happened to Native Americans, but won't talk about the many massacres that happen in the um, United States. They got the Tulsa race massacre up here, sure enough. 800 wounded. No, it's probably over 800 that died. You had Rosewood. You had, I mean, there are so many places that uh, you saw many massacres take place in this country. But let's let Joe act like he didn't know this was going on. Offices, attorney's offices, hotels, movie theaters, there were restaurants, nightclubs, schools, churches, anything you can imagine wanting or needing in your community in 1921, the black community had here in the Greenwood District, the most prosperous, successful black owned business district in the country during that time. All of that. Was Again, there was many, many more, many, many more. Go look at that playlist when you get a chance. Why we need reparations on the Bob TV um, YouTube channel. Uh, and you'll see and know about that stuff. The Devil Punch Bowl, where they murdered hundreds, um, they say thousands of black, just threw them in a pit and shot them all dead. Um, these was black prisoners or, um, you know, people who they had on the railroad and things like that. Murdered them, slaughtered them. And buried on top of it. And had to nerd the plant peaches on top of it. And they said most of the best peaches, the most delicious peaches, come from that area. Would change on May 31st, 1921. This image here is of Mount Zion Baptist Church. Yeah. And Mount Zion sits just to the west of the Greenwood Cultural Center. In this image, prior to the massacre which took place here, you can see the, this is actually the church prior to the massacre, and as it is in flames. The massacre took place here 100 years ago due to the false allegation that a black man, Dick Rowland, had assaulted a young white girl named Sarah Page. Now you should know about that, Joe. You should know about that. Because <laughs> you yourself have been accused of rape, just like Donald Trump. Within 24 hours, the community would be completely destroyed at the hands of thousands of white rioters who invaded the Greenwood District, who burned more than a thousand homes to the ground, 35 square blocks of property, at least 300 people lost their lives, and 300 black owned businesses would be completely destroyed. More than two point seven million dollars in insurance. Now I like that she let her know more than at least three hundred people died. At least they have yet to start doing the forensic research of the bodies. A lot of them got burnt to ashes, and they went and excavated the town. I mean, they went and you know and got all that stuff up and built right on top of it. So it's probably more than three hundred. 
by black homeowners and business owners, every single insurance claim was denied because it did not contain a riot clause. It was a massacre. So they could not get money off their insurance because it, uh, they, um, their insurance didn't have a riot clause. Who gets a freaking riot clause in insurance policy? Who expect a riot to take out their home? I guess we should have expected that. And guess what? It probably would have been an extra two uh, more money that you had to pay on your insurance, probably double of what your insurance was in the first place. And Joe Biden said it was a massacre. Now, do that mean he's humbled? It was rebuilt in the 50s. So they had just finished building this structure. Oh, which he was seems valued so concerned. Which was $92,000 in 1921, April of 1921. Writers destroyed the church. Mean Barack Obama didn't tell this man about this. The first black president didn't tell this man about the black holocausts that happened all over the, the freaking United States. The church decided to stay and rebuild in the Greenwood District. And this is the church that stands today. What many people don't know about the story of the Greenwood District is that by 1925, the African American community had completely rebuilt the Greenwood District. Without the help or support of the city officials, the city of Tulsa, um, with many obstacles to overcome, including ordinances that tried to prevent them from rebuilding their homes and businesses, Greenwood would rise from the ashes. And we saw the return and as you can see in this photograph, the return of black owned businesses. In fact, there were more black owned businesses following the massacre than prior to. These are all black owned businesses lining the streets of the Greenwood District. Did, did Joe Biden just tell her that back? <laughs> And this speaks to our ancestors' courage, to their strength, to their determination, and to their resiliency. So even after burning down that vast, vast business district, black owned, business district that was open to do business with whites. That area of Oklahoma is full of Native Americans to do business with Native Americans. We were the thriving source in that area. We start that area of Greenwood was bringing in, uh, uh, doing better than uh, Tulsa in general. Everybody came to try to do business there. And even after burning down within less than 10 years, they rebuilt it. Quick, fast, in a hurry. And like she said, that is the determination. You could, We can build something up and you can be angry, hateful, and sadistic and tear it down. It's not going to stop our resolve. We're going to rebuild it bigger, better, and ever. And that's what they did. Now, according Trump would have said then, I guess that was a good thing, knowing the amount of Trump. I say bad incident, but I guess it's turned out and for it's good. No. And some of you probably, probably, people are probably thinking that, well, it tore down and they built it bigger and better. Just like the Democratic slogan, bigger and better. No. People died. Possible generations of people that didn't get a chance to go throughout life and, 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 and double and prosper all because of this. Uncles, cousins, daughters, nieces, nephews didn't get a chance to grow up and get married, grow up and you know, have kids and live their best life. It would be my honor to escort you to three of our living survivors who, with lived experiences who can speak to what they have endured as a result of That's the 1921 Tulsa Race Massacre. You just cut off. <laughs> what happened between, was this 25 mm -hmm. and 50? And that range, the highway came through, or what, what was the big change? The ex 
expressway which divided um, the Greenwood District, which ran through the heart of the Greenwood ca yeah. District, came a little later than the 50s. But several things led to the decline of the Greenwood District. They, of course, rebuilt, and Greenwood would flourish through the 30s and, and the 40s. But significant, uh, one significant thing that happened was the end of segregation. The dollar which had circulated in this community up to at least 19 times was now being spent in white-owned establishments. And when we asked ourselves... Now, you're talking about to a staunch uh, anti, uh, you know, <laughs> he is not for... Um, you know, he's all for segregation. He is not for integration. And look, segregation has a place. You, 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 there's nothing wrong with having your own. As long as you open to do business and, and you don't let other people not be able to do business with you. Because you got to find a way to keep the dollar circulating, as she said, in your community. Because the Asians do it, the Latinos do it, man. You go down to Harlem over there, uh, uh, in in Spanish Harlem, in different areas, man. You see that that Spanish dollar is circulating it, and it is not going into the black neighborhoods. It's not. It's very rarely going to the white neighborhoods. Same thing with Chinatown, and that's the way it's supposed to be. The white dollar is supposed to circulate in their own neighborhood, but yet. It should be all right for you to go put some money in that area as long as they put money in your area. She said one of the declines was not only a highway, which one of the biggest racist plots to tear down a community is um, uh, find some way to take over the land in the area and put a big old highway in the middle of it. So the depreciation value of the area can go down on purpose. And then let um, the um wealthy white millionaires put up all the hotels and things like that on the profit off it and not keeping a dollar in your own home, own neighborhood. Survivors, why they began to spend their money outside of their community, they said, well, we had that right to spend our dollar in white owned businesses uh, and stores and restaurants and we wanted to exercise that right. Not understanding the long-term consequence that it would have on the small business owner's house in the Greenwood District. So the end of segregation, of course, the expressway being built through the heart of the uh, black business district, which is something that has happened across our country. Happened in my city, my city, Wilmington, Delaware. We're the eighth largest black population in America, in Delaware. And the city is more than half. All right, I'm gonna keep going. You go look at this. Uh, I'm, I'm exactly, wasting time. Didn't exactly happen. But, but the bottom line, she explained to him the reason why um, the community stopped thriving is not only did they put that highway there, but uh, integration allowed black people to say, hey, I, I can go sp spend money. Uh, you know, I want some of that white money, too. Well, you didn't really need the white money if you're spending it within your own community. The dollar is being circulated. Now, if you happen to be in a white community and you hungry or you see something that's nice that you don't see in your neighborhood, that's a different story or in the Asian neighborhood. I mean, that's different. But your dollars should be in your community. And I believe that. But you should be free that when you're out and about in other communities, you don't wait till you get all the way back to your community and go get a sandwich, man, when you got a man right there willing to cook you a sandwich and he's not being racist. Today at the corner of Greenwood and Archer is a remnant of what once was. Yeah. Are you going to go, Joe? Are you from Greenwood? I am. I'm, I'm a Tulsa native. I've been here at the Greenwood Cultural Center for 25 years, since my mid-20s or so. Since you're 15. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Congratulations, Apology for Tulsa. You heard what that lady said at the end? Let me play that again. You ain't never heard that man apologize. Look like you ain't never heard Trump apologize. You ain't gonna never see Joe Biden apologize. Not for something when it comes to black people. <laughs> Mr. President, you apologize for Tulsa?
apologize for what? Hey, I ain't got nothing to do with that. My people ain't do. My people, my my family line didn't do that. We from Wilmington, Delaware. We're we're from Scranton, Pennsylvania. We ain't got nothing to do with that. Well, apologize for what? What are you gonna get my face? Apologize. Yo, did she, did you hear what she say? Me apologize. Ah, she funny. I ain't apologizing for Jack. Races ain't gonna apologize for something other races do. Are you freaking kidding me? Get out of here. But wait, I'm I'm not done. Let me. Here's Joe Biden. Now I can't get into this full speech. It's too long, but it's a part of his speech that really, really ticked me off. And I'm gonna see if I can find it. It wasn't everyone, but there was enough hate, resentment, and vengeance in the community. Enough people who believed that America does not belong to everyone and not everyone is created equal. Native Americans, Asian Americans, Hispanic Americans, black Americans, a belief enforced by law, by badge, by hood and by noose. In the middle of that speech, addressing issues concerning how white supremacists Enraged in their jealousy of a town that's probably booming better than the town that they're living in. I mean, good folks, you got to understand these folks had mansions built by their own hands. Black people having mansions in the racist Southwest. Mansions. Owning pieces of oil field. He gets up there and do a speech talking about black and brown. But when I saw that part, I'm like, bruh, that's the most. Why would you go there and start talking about black and brown? Why you go there and start talking about pushing policies that's going to do right for black and brown people? This ain't got nothing to do with no brown people. This ain't got nothing to do with the Native Americans in Tulsa, Oklahoma, or the white Americans, or the white women. It was black people that was slaughtered in that area. And that's just for starters. We're going to go down a whole list of places where white supremacists, jealous bigots went and raped and pillaged the whole freaking town. You're always showing the, and, and the Native Americans, what you call engines on the, on, on the on cowboy TV show, them going in there, chopping off people, skinning their head, raping and pillaging when you were the main people doing that crap. And you did it to them, and you did it to, to the Mexicans um, down there at the Alamo, and you did it to um, black people from day one. I was personally insulted. We're gonna rob you. Look for stuff for insult. I ain't gotta look. The man is easy to insult you. You just so low key in your hatred that that I mean, you so low key in your thinking that you don't see a racial slur without it being a racial slur. You actually think in order for somebody to be a racist, they got to actually say a racist slur. No, it's your ideology and how you're thinking. Thinking is enough for me. You don't go to a freaking black town that was massacred. Well, over 300 plus black people were brutalized and massacred. All their fortunes were burnt away. Freaking airplanes dropping down uh, uh, um, um, gasoline fluid. They said bombs. There wasn't that many bombs going on during that time. Uh, but most of this stuff was gasoline being dropped down from the um, planes, dropped down on the plant places that made it easy for them to erupt. It probably was some bonds, but it wasn't like, you know, come on, we talking about back then, okay? Let's say it was. But most of these houses were burned down. And these farmers that own land, they took some of that petroleum and dropped the petroleum on the homes and lit it on fire. It was easy for these homes to get on fire. And he going to sit there and talk about black and brown people in the middle of that freaking speech. You go back. So you got to, you got to have an open ear and an open heart and catch certain things that certain people say, you don't go to talking about what you're going to do for all people in a place where all people wasn't massacred. Are you out of your freaking mind? It erases nothing. He's the first U.S. president to travel to Tulsa to do so. He acknowledged the scars seared onto the nation's conscience. Now, the media is painting this as if this was a good thing. Like I said, the other bigot was ready to come to Tulsa, Oklahoma, because he needed that black vote. 
we got this one here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, because you figure he really care and want to really make some changes. No, this is all. I told you every politician don't do something just to be doing that. Most of the time they're doing that because they need to maintain the power they got. And they realize the power that you got is black power. And I got to keep that black power in my pocket. So occasionally I'll go down there to do, go to places to 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 um do what I need to do to keep that black power in my pocket. How you going to act like and you don't even know nothing about this and you do a speech uh with these teleprompters. You know, teleprompter right there. You can see it right here. Now you with that stuff. Seared onto the nation's conscience. Private planes, private planes dropping explosives. The first and only domestic aerial assault of its kind on an American city here in Tulsa. Eight of Greenwood's nearly two dozen churches burned like Mount Zion. My fellow Americans, this was not a riot. This was a massacre. <laughs> Very skilled politician. Let me take your words and give them back to you. Let me take your words and give it back to you. The president has pledged to do more to address racial inequities and to try lessening the racial wealth gap. A survey released last year by the Federal Reserve found the median wealth of black families is less than 15% of white families. The median for white families is less than that, but they're not going to tell you that. Families was $188,000 compared to just $24,000 for black families. Now, let me stop there for a second. Let's just go by this report right here. You talking about over one hundred and sixty thousand dollars more. White families have over black families. And I like to be specific native blacks because they're not counting the wealth and fortune that come from blacks that's coming to immigrants. They talking about ADOS, American descendants of slave, foundational black Americans, whatever you want to call us. That's pathetic. And you don't want to know why. The median wealth is like that. Number one, after slavery, you promise to pay restitution for the hell that you put us through that you never came through. Number two, we say, fine, you ain't got to give us jack. We going to make our own way. You give us, you give us, a, you give us a, um, you know, you give us an inch, we'll make a mile. You give us a penny, we'll, 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 we, we hustlers, man. We know how to flip it and make $10,000 out of, it. you know, you give it, we're leaving with nothing. We came from an area where we ran stuff. You come down here and, 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 and make tons of money off of us. And then go tell us to pull ourselves by the bootstraps. Are you freaking kidding me? Well, hey, look. I ain't got no boots and straps because you, you wouldn't give me none. I went and took whatever I could to make some. As soon as I put the boots and straps on, you see how good I start doing. You won't take that away from me. And that's the reason why that median wealth because every t is like that because every time we start to prosper without your direct help. You steal. You take. You rob. From us. Now Joe Biden talking about he's going to do something about that. Let me tell you something. The rich will be just as well off. The middle class will do better and everybody will do better. Today, the Biden administration announced several new initiatives aimed at tackling those disparities, including an effort to combat inequity in home appraisals and housing discrimination, boosting the share of federal contracts by 50 percent over five years for small and disadvantaged businesses. This is important. See, this is that bull crap they do because they put up here, OK, the Biden administration or the Trump administration, don't matter what it was. They're going to combat inequity in home appraisals and housing discrimination. Well, you should have been doing that all along. Wasn't that what you were doing in the first place? How about you say we're going to combat inequity in home appraisals and housing discrimination when it comes to black people? How about boosting federal contracts for small and disadvantaged advantaged businesses of black people? 
No, they never put that in there. They'll name it African-American. And then you look deep into the policies, just like with the so-called left plan. On a left every voice plan. He was talking about you. He was give, he, he was using a policy with a black face, but willing to give all kind of goodies to everybody. It's not what you do, man. That's a con game. A little more slicker than what Trump could ever do. Five years for small and disadvantaged businesses. Does anyone doubt this whole nation will be better off with these investments? The rich will be just as well off. The middle class will do better and everybody will do better. The pre And everybody will do better. Right now, we ain't talking about everybody. We talking about these black folks who had stuff taken away from them. President also would use funds tied to his proposed American jobs plan, including $10 billion for community led infrastructure projects and $31 billion in small business programs to increase access to capital. The Tulsa Centennial has also fueled a national conversation about reparations for centuries of slavery and racial discrimination. And Yamish joins me now. So Yamish, tell us a little. All right, now I'm not going to go through that interview. Because if Unish is not talking about reparations, then Unish can go somewhere, okay? You can niche your behind somewhere. This stuff been happening all across America, these slaughters against black people. Yeah, they were slaughtering for Chinese over here and Asians here and probably some Latinos there and probably some Polish people here and all that. But nothing on the scale as this country has toward black people. You made your wealth off our blood, sweat, and tears. <clears throat> we ask for restitution. You say you're going to give it to us, and then you flip us and give us the bird, just like Joe Biden did with the $15 minimum wage, just like Joe Biden did with the doggone student debt cancellation crap. I'm going to make sure it happens, but I ain't going to put it in a bill. <laughs> 